gastric acid secretion is divided into three phases. The cephalic phase, the gastric phase, and the intestinal phase. In the cephalic phase, the cognitive and the sensory stimulation triggers the parasympathetic outflows via the glossopharyngeal nerve to enhance salivary secretions and the vagus nerve, which in turn enhances gastric and pancreatic secretions. As food enters the stomach in the gastric phase, it provides chemical and mechanical stimulation that activates three pathways that increase secretory and motor responses, which then stimulate gastric acid secretion. During the intestinal phase, the presence of protons, high osmolarity, and nutrients in the intestinal lumen stimulates the three regulatory pathways, namely the neural, hormonal, and paracrine pathways, which in turn stimulate an increase in pancreatic secretions and inhibit gastric acid secretion. The stomach is anatomically divided into three parts, namely the fundus, the body, and the antrum. The fundus and the body with their thin walls both act as reservoir, and the antrum, which has thicker walls, aids in digestion and gastric emptying. The wall of the stomach consists of four layers, the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis externa, and the outermost serosa. The cytoplasm of unstimulated parietal cells contains numerous tubules and vesicles which together are called the tubulovesicular system. The membranes of the tubular vesicles contain the transport proteins responsible for secretion of hydrochloric acid into the lumen of the gland. When parietal cells are stimulated to secrete hydrochloric acid, tubular vesicular membranes fuse with the plasma membrane of the secretory canaliculi. This extensive membrane fusion increases hydrochloric acid pumping sites at the surface of the lumen because it contains hydrogen potassium ATPase pump, the primary hydrogen pump which exchanges hydrogen for potassium. Hydrogen ions accumulate in the cytoplasm through the dissociation of carbonic acid. At the basolateral membrane, Chloride ions enter the cell via the chloride bicarbonate countertransporter, while the sodium potassium AT paste pump provides cytosolic potassium. Through leaky channels at the apical membrane, potassium moves out into the lumen but is transported back intracellularly by the hydrogen potassium AT paste pump in exchange for hydrogen. Majority of the final secretion entering the lumen contains hydrochloric acid. Gastric acid is produced on an average rate of 1,500 ml per day with a pH of 1 to 3.5. Gastric acid secretion involves three physiological agonists, namely acetylcholine released by cholinergic nerve terminals, gastrin from G cells, and histamine secreted by gastrin-stimulated enterochromaffin-like cells or ECL cells. Histamine is the major mediator of hydrochloric acid secretion. The parietal cell has separate receptors for the three secretagogues. Acetylcholine binds to M3 muscarinic receptors. Gastrin binds to cholecystokinin B gastrin receptors. Both activate second messengers that will release calcium. Histamine binds to H2 histamine receptors to increase CAMP levels. Elevated intracellular calcium and CAMP enhances hydrochloric acid secretion by activating basolateral sodium potassium AT paste pumps and causing more hydrogen potassium AT paste pumps and chloride channels to be inserted into the apical membrane. Acetylcholine from the vagus nerve has both an excitatory effect on G cells and an inhibitory effect on B cells. In addition, gastrin from G cells increases the secretion of somatostatin that is being produced by B cells. Somatostatin has two inhibitory effects. First, it decreases CAMP levels, therefore inhibiting hydrochloric acid release. Second, 
Somatostatin produced during continuous gastrin secretion inhibits gastrin production of G-cells, and no hydrochloric acid is further secreted from the parietal cells. Peptic ulcer disease occurs when the regulation of gastric juice secretion and the integrity of the gastric wall are disturbed. Abdominal pain, which is classically epigastric and occurs after a meal, bloating and abdominal fullness, vomiting, anorexia, weight loss, hematemesis, and melena are among the usual symptoms of peptic ulcers. It is caused by diminished effectiveness of the gastric mucosal barrier from improper use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs, hypersecretion of acid, and Helicobacter pylori infection. 80% of cases are caused by Helicobacter pylori, which secretes its own buffer to counteract gastric acid, and certain proteins that liquefy the gastric mucosal barrier and evoke immunological responses. These contribute to mucosal erosion and ulcer formation. Another major cause is the improper use of aspirin and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs. The gastric mucosa protects itself from gastric acid with a layer of mucus, the secretion of which is stimulated by certain prostaglandins. NSAIDs block the function of cyclooxygenase 1, which is essential for the production of prostaglandins. Smoking and stress are also risk factors. Nicotine in cigarettes increases parasympathetic nerve activity to the GI tract by activating the nicotinic receptors at the synapses. An increase in the stimulation to the enterochromaffin-like cells and G cells stimulates the release of more histamine and gastrin, which further increases the acidity of the gastric juice. Also, Stress is proven to cause excessive production of gastric acid and delay healing of peptic ulcers. Alcohol can irritate and erode the mucous lining of the stomach and, like caffeine, it increases the amount of stomach acid produced. In managing peptic ulcer disease, several drugs are used. Antacids reduce acidity by neutralizing acid and inhibiting pepsin. Histamine H2 receptor blockers and anticholinergics hinder histamine and acetylcholine respectively from binding on parietal cell. Cytoprotective drugs coat the ulcer surface thus promoting healing while antibiotics eradicate Helicobacter pylori. Last are the potent and long-acting proton pump inhibitors or PPIs. PPIs form a covalent disulfide bond with a hydrogen potassium ATPase pump, leading to its irreversible inhibition. Until new pump is made, gastric acid secretion is halted. Preventing peptic ulcer disease is simple. Individuals are advised to refrain from smoking, avoid improper use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, avoid or limit alcohol and caffeine intake, and lastly, manage stress properly.